There we go. Recording is in progress. She meant progress, obviously. Um, so yeah, I've talked already about uh, how to debug Java code. How do you debug um, native code? And this is very much about the Android platform, the, the AOSP stuff. I'm, this is not necessarily relevant to the NDK. Um, yeah. So I'm talking about native debugging platform code. So native code means uh, code written in C and C++. Platform code means part of the AOSP system. So this can be command line programs, simple, uh, daemons, libraries, that kind of stuff. Oh, I forgot to. This is an old slide. I'm going to skip this slide. It doesn't really work anymore. I thought I'd taken that out. OK, LLDB and GDB. Which debugger should you choose? Um, so LLDB is the now recommended uh, debugger. So LLDB is from the LLVM uh, Clang uh, tool set. And this has been supported in Android since 10, maybe a little bit before that, but certainly from 10. Uh, GDB is the GNU debugger. So that has been supported in Android since ever, since forever. Uh, it's now very firmly deprecated. As to which one is better, really, I don't know. Um, they both work. They're both equally good as far as I'm concerned. Quick word about the code. So in order to debug something, you need executables with debug symbols. Now, if you look in your $out directory, this is my, my little hello world program, uh, you'll find that it's compiled with, uh, that it's been stripped, no debug info. So the versions of the executables that are deployed to the Android targets don't have debug symbols. However, if you look in the symbols directory in your dollar out, uh, you will find that there is, uh, there are copies of the same executables and these do have debug info, debug info uh, and are not stripped. So you need to use this executable when you're debugging, or rather you need to point your debugger at this, uh, this version of the executable because it's gonna need, need to read the, the simple table. Now, setting up uh, both GDB and LLDB for remote debugging, doing this from scratch is certainly possible. I've done it many times, but it's a little bit of a pain. However, um, there are these really handy little Python scripts which pretty much auto automate the entire thing. So it's now just a question of running the script with, it, with some parameters and away you go. So these scripts are in the development scripts directory. They're part of the path. So you just type uh, GDB client or LLDB client and away you go. Amusingly, actually, they are both the same thing. If you actually look in here, you'll find that LLDB client is just a symbolic link to GDB client. And GDB client has been modified to default to you running LLDB. So this is a little bit subversive to be honest, but this is the way they do it. So now if you want to use GDB client to run GDB, <laughs> you have to specify no LLDB before it will do it. Um, also, if you run GDB client without the minus, minus no LLDB, you actually get this little rude message that says GDB is deprecated in favor of LLDB. Uh, if you can't use LLDB set minus minus no LLDB and file a bug with, with Google or file a bug, which, will, which they will de then definitely ignore. Anyway, yeah, I think we get the message. LLDB is probably the way to go. Um, okay, so let's have a look at a couple of debug sessions. Nothing too uh, drastic here. Um, you kind of have to be in uh, Android build top 
in order for this to work because some of the paths um, seem to be relative to that. And also you must run ADB as root. So preparatory, you need to type C root to get the, to the top level, ADB root to restart ADB uh, as root. Obviously you can't do this. You can only do this on, on engineering and user debug builds. This isn't gonna work on a user build. Then this is my hello world program, uh, LLDB client minus R, so the program I want to run. And I give a path. So this is the path as it will appear on the Android target. So vendor bin hello world. And it rattles around for a, uh, a few moments and eventually it says it's created it, process uh, PID 1802. Um, thread name is set a stop and we're at this line of code. Um, this is kind of not very interesting. So this actually is the C++ runtime startup code. Generally speaking, that's not what you want to debug. That's probably been debugged already. Uh, so the normal thing to do is to set a breakpoint on main. So B main will do that, then continue. And now we're in the main function. And this is the, the entire function. It just has, has a printf and a return. So it's not a very interesting program to debug, but it's good just to make sure everything just works. Uh, so now I can step one line of code by typing n. Um, the printf here, so that's going to output to standard out, that has been captured and it appears back here in the debug console. So we see the hello world string appear here. We're now on line six. And then uh, we just hit continue to continue to the program to the end and it finishes. Okay, so that's the basis of how it all works. Um, I constantly for keep forgetting to restart uh, ADB as root. Uh, and when you do that, you get this message here, which confused me the first time I saw it at least. It says, uh, fail to get reply to handshake packet. What does that mean? So what that mean actually means is you have forgotten to run ADB root. Uh, now, I'm sure we're all familiar with GDB and can drive GDB from the console blindfolded or something. Um, LLDB is somewhat similar. So there are a couple of links here that may be interesting. There's a tutorial here. And from my point of view, at least as a GDB user, there's a little conversion guide here. As you may have noticed, a lot of the stuff is kind of similar, like C for continue and um, N for next and so on. So you can use quite a lot of your existing knowledge. That was a weird sound. Is everybody okay? Okay. Um, what else? Okay, um, supposing we want to debug a daemon. Uh, so in this case, I want to debug the lights hell. So here I want to do an attach. So the way we do this is first of all, on the uh, Android target, we find the PID that we want to attach to. So this is gonna be the lights hell, PID 435. Uh, Launch GDB client with a minus P option, P for PID, I guess. Um, it will then attach to that running process. And it will then stop it. So process uh, 435 is now stopped. Am I supposed to mute my mic here? Hi, said again? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I am supposed to mute my mic. Everybody else is muted. Sorry. Uh, yeah, otherwise we get noises. Yeah, like, like this. 
<laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> um, blah, 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 yeah. So, whoops, come back. Um, yeah, so we've attached to uh, this how, and we're in some random place. So your first thing, the first thing you want to know is where the heck are we? Uh, we can use the backtrace or BT command to discover where we are in the in the thread. Uh, sorry, in the in the in the stack, and we are somewhere way down in the binder handling code. Um, but at least we can see that um, yeah, this was called ultimately from the main function. This kind of makes sense. So I could set breakpoints on some of these functions higher up, or I could actually. Um, move through to frame number five, for example, which probably has some code I would recognize in. Or I can just set a breakpoint on a function that I'm trying to debug. So the, the main part of the lights how is a function called set light state. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly what the, uh, what the, what the full reference is, what the full fully qualified name of that is. So I can do an image lookup minus R minus S set light state. This will then look through the simple table and print out all the set light states there are. And this kind of scrolls off past the end of the screen. Um, but then, you know, the, the, basically, I'm just trying to find out which, you know, how, how many functions called set light state are there in the symbol table, and which one do I really want? Answer is I probably want this one here. Uh, light service Marvin, Marvin be the name of the target. So having uh, established that, the fully qualified name I need is just lights, uh, set light state. So to set a breakpoint on that. Uh, C to continue. And then uh, next time somebody calls set light state, we hit the breakpoint and we're in some relatively sane looking C++ code. And then I debug it. Okay, this is slightly out of, out of sequence. Um, one other thing you can do with uh, LLDB, and I haven't actually tried this, if I'm totally honest, but I, but I believe it's possible. You can use this to do debugging from VS Code. I so, try, but it's giving me some, some weird error, actually. Okay. Well, it's meant to work. I, like I said, I didn't actually get around to trying this. So I actually just copied and pasted this. Hmm. Bad me. Um, but it says you should be able to do this stuff. So you need in to install an extension, run LLDB client, and that outputs some text. You then paste that into uh, VS Code, and it's meant to work. Well, if it doesn't work, don't blame me. It's not. Or probably um, I, I forget to check the binary if it's true or not. Okay. Probably. okay. I'll, I'll, I need to check twice. Okay. Again, it'd be interesting to take this uh, offline uh, and maybe, uh, yeah, maybe we could uh, paste something on the uh, in, in in the chat or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then the last couple of slides, I just want to do the third thing. So. The third common use case is I have some JNI libraries which are being called from platform code, and I want to put uh, break statements in those. The key target here will be system server. So this is the main part of Android. This has this is what drives Android, and it loads a whole bunch of of, uh, of libraries. So how do I debug those JNI libraries? Okay, so first of all, uh, we need to find out the PID of system server. So it's uh, 584. Then I do an attach to that PID. And it will then uh, halt system server and I can then set breakpoints. Note that the attach takes a little while because system server has like 70 or something threads in it. And it seems to take some time to stop each individual thread. I'm not quite sure why. So it can take 10 or 20 seconds to actually stop it. Then I can set breakpoints. 
uh, I can continue, it will carry on and hit the breakpoint and the rest is normal. And that's it. So that is fairly briefly, but that's an overview of uh, debugging using LLDB client. Okay, cool. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Anybody tried this apart from the VS Code thing? Or maybe has anybody got VS Code to work? Not me for sure, <laughs> but at least I try. Okay, I, I ought to actually try that out and see. Um, uh, yeah, see it for real. Okay, as as a general thing, how many people here do interactive debugging uh, of uh, of native code? Or to put it another way, how do you debug native code? Printf? Most of the time, but it's painful. <laughs> That's why I start to explore the LLDB or GDB, but it's give me no luck. Mm -hmm. Printf is painful, especially if you cannot sync uh, yeah. to, to, to the device. And there are a lot of devices uh, which have trouble syncing code, so that's really terrible. Mm -hmm. so I think I'm not sure how our developers do that actually, but uh, I hope they use uh, one of those. I don't know. Um, it's one of the questions people always ask me, and I go through uh, something similar to what I just described. Um, but I'm not quite sure if there are the real use cases. Some sometimes a debugger can actually. To be honest, from, from my experience, that the most useful thing you can do with a debugger is not necessarily debugging per se, but it's a good way of learning a piece of code. So it's good point, good to sort of get to a point in the code and, and see how it decides, how it makes its decisions, stepping through little bits of, of code and that kind of thing. So I see debuggers as more of a learning tool than as an actual debugging tool. So, okay, so that's my thought on the subject. Okay, so I think I'm basically done on that. I am just going to stop the recording.